Hello, everyone. On behalf of the Historical Society, I'm Pedro Galonis. I want to welcome you to this evening. And if you'd all please stand. Heavenly Father, we're gathered this evening to honor our friend and neighbor, Sergeant Francis Chesco, as we approach the 70th anniversary of our nation's greatest land battle, a battle in which he took part. In gathering here, we seek to honor not only Francis, but also all of our country's veterans who gave so much of themselves for our freedom and the cause of peace throughout the world. Bless our veterans and their families. Keep our armed forces safe from harm in all corners of the world. Guide our nation's leaders to seek peaceful solutions to the problems America faces at home and abroad. And if necessary, give us the strength and courage to persevere in battle as those we honor here this evening did 70 years ago. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're here tonight to honor our hero of the greatest generation, Sergeant Francis Chesco. <laughs> Francis, you're going to hear the life of Francis Chesco shortly. Thanks to your dear, dear friend and ours, Tom Ward. I, I can't go on. Uh, it was hard for me to get ready for this because for one year, Tom Ward has campaigned us at every meeting. When are we going to honor Mr. Chesko? He campaigned, he began doing research, and he worked, I think, every day of his life since probably June, maybe earlier, I don't know, but at least June, he worked on this project. He has some surprises in store, and I know you're going to be very, very joyful from what he, what he has done. We have some very able substitutes. Um, I'm going to introduce a man with many titles, and tonight his title is going to be uh, Son-in-Law Tom Ward, Presenter. <clears throat> The microphone. Uh, no, I'll, we'll just sit from here. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if Peg told you, I, I didn't hear that uh, Tom's actually in the hospital. For those of you who don't know it already, uh, he's down in uh, uh, rehab in Pottsville and unable to make it tonight. And as Peg said, he certainly did put a lot of time into this program. So we sort of picked up the ball on the one yard line. He took it the 99 yards. And uh, we hope that we score a touchdown tonight. So certainly, we should call him Francis. So I put together this slideshow. Francis gave me a lot of material. I stole a little bit from the internet. But we thought that this would give you a, a feeling, you know, more information about Francis if you already know him. And if you don't know, by the end of this, you'll, you'll get a feel for, you know, what he went through in, in, in World War II and a little bit about his life and, and the life of his family. Uh, I'm going to just allow you to read the big captions, and if there's a long caption, I'll read it. Please note that the Barry's is just north of Monty City. Of course, it's no longer there, like many of the patches. That's the Monty Tunnel. The Barry's patch is named for the, the foreman on that job in 1863. <laughs> Get to Barry's by going on the railroad. <coughs> Francis, could you 
built shortly after Francis finished elementary school, so we never had a chance to go there in elementary school, but in a second or so we'll see that he did get a chance to go there later. How many steps, Paul? As many times as I walk, but I don't know. Six feet three. I forgot to say you're our research assistant. <laughs> steps the same as before the school firm is after? Mm -hmm. are, are the, is it the same steps? Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. survived the yeah. fire? Yeah. For those of you who are not in the area, that's the St. Nicholas Breaker right across the street from the school. Overboard, the code name for the Battle of Normandy. 
Our next home from October to June was in six-man tents at Swindon, England. In our training, we built a daily bridge across the Thames River at three o'clock in the morning in three and a half hours. Wow, <laughs> Francis Chesco. <laughs> you are about to embark on a great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon the, this great and noble undertaking. General Dwight D. Eisenhower. He's actually here talking to airmen on their way. Mm -hmm. that was that army? That was army. That was 101st Patch. Uh -huh. Francis crossed the English Channel with the 148th Engineer Combat Battalion, and he headed for Utah Beach on D-Day plus one. <clears throat> no one down here. <laughs> the announcement in the record American 
knows it's not called the Battle of the Bulge, it's, it's the Great Battle Region. This picture is actually taken after after uh, VE Day in Landsberg, Germany. And I think many of these pictures uh, are actually after the fighting. The bottles were empty. <laughs> <laughs> when Jack Benny, Ingrid Bergman, and singer Martin <laughs> Tilton entertained the troops in Germany during the American occupation following VE Day. And Jack Benny and Mar Martha Tilton had just come from the Pacific. This, that was their second tour that year.
the the elves and what was then the chef's restaurant later on the Mahanoy City restaurant and then later on the Drake's Laundry. The honor roll contained the names of more than 2,000 residents of the Monway area who were serving in all areas of the armed forces that stood proudly on the corner of 2nd and Center Streets. Later on, it would be that corner would become Wagner's gas station. Rose Pangonis Chesco points to the name of her brother, William J. Pangonis, on the roll of honor at 2nd and Center Street. Young Jim Cates holding an extra edition of the Record American on VE Day, May 8, 1945. The person who snapped this shot was Bill Cates, Jim's dad, the well-known Monty City photographer, who lived to be more than 100 years old. And that's the paper that uh, Jim was holding. Three months after VE Day, the war in the Pacific ended with the destruction of the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6th and August 9th, 1945. Paving the way for the troops to come home, Francis will tell you what a 40 plus 8 was. These are pictures that he actually shot of the victory ship that he came home on, the Pachung, George Washington Bridge, and the New York skyline. <laughs> Sad story about Shep, I'm not going to tell it. <laughs> Initially a happy reunion. Now as I understand it, Francis knew Rose before the war, but I don't think they dated. I'm not sure. Rose snapping the picture there, you can see her shadow. <laughs> Wedding day, April 16th, 1947. That's my Uncle Joe on the left. Day. Red buttons is the parachute as he gets stuck on the, the church. So this is a replica of that. But apparently, you know, that's that, that is historical. Much of the longest day was very historical.
Francis stands on the rain-drenched concourse of the Eiffel Tower on August 8, 1994, 50 years after the liberation of Paris in August of 1944. Francis and Jim at the 66th Annual Reunion of the 7th Armored Division in Chicago in 2012. In September of this year, Francis and Jim traveled to South Carolina for the reunion of the veterans of the Battle of the Gulf. The next seven pictures are from that trip. Francis greets fellow, fellow Battle of the Bulge vet Mike Levin, 95 years young, at the Marriott Hotel in Columbia, South Carolina. George Patton Waters, at left, the grandson of General George Patton, signs an autograph at the reunion of veterans of the Battle of the Bulge in Columbia, South Carolina, <coughs> September 2014. This is my favorite Say John was Sal's photo. John's here, I think. <laughs> Bronze star for each of the major battles and campaigns that Francis participated in. From Normandy to the Baltic. <laughs> and now it's time for the next part of the program. That project was done by webmaster um, Paul Kuhn. He does everything for us. Now, this is the part of the program that Tom was going to do. He was going to be the MC. So his wife Dot, my mother-in-law, said it falls to me now to take over. Uh, we have a number of presentations to make, and this is what what Tom really worked hard on, and I think largely in secret. Are you are you aware of the, the presentations you're getting tonight? No, I know. he did a very good job. Tom was on the phone quite a lot, wrote a lot of letters, and uh, rightfully so. Uh, so we have a number of presentations to, to be made tonight, and the first presentation it comes from U.S. Senator Patrick J. Toomey. And it's going to be presented by my wife, Peg Coon, because she said, if I have to present something, make it first so I don't faint if I have to wait to make one later. So this is Peg Coon for Patrick J. Toomey. On behalf of United States Senator Patrick J. Toomey, I am pleased to present this commendation. It reads as follows. December 13, 2014, 
U.S. Senator Pat Toomey proudly recognizes U.S. Army Sergeant Francis C. Chesco, a true American hero. I am honored to recognize U.S. Army Sergeant Francis C. Chesco for his outstanding service to the United States of America during World War II while assigned to the 148th Battalion. Signed, Pat Toomey, United States Senator. The next presentation uh, comes from U.S. Representative Matt Cartwright from the 17th Congressional District. The presenter is Bill Hanley. Thank you. I actually have two presentations for Mr. Chesko. I was kidding him beforehand. Mm -hmm. One is a Certificate of Special Congressional Recognition, and the second one is a presentation that was set into the congressional record. And I was kidding Mr. Chesko before we started. I said, if you take a look at this, you'll see that this is something your family can go back 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, 100 years from now, and look up at the congressional record. And your name and your uh, citation will be listed. And he assured me 100 years from now that he would be around to see this. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you very much for your service. Tom Brokaw underestimated it when he said you are the greatest generation. You certainly are. Thank you, sir. There are two presentations uh, that are going to be presented by Neil Goodman. Neil was good enough to cross the aisle, and he's actually going to uh, make a presentation uh, from the 123rd Legislative District, but also for he's presenting for Senator David Argel uh, from PA's 29th District. Yeah, I'm double batting tonight. <laughs> Hi, neighbor. As most of you know, Mr. Chesco and I are neighbors, and uh, I mean, I, I'm truly honored to be here today and to be able to present something like this to him. I mean, I know all of us just relish looking at all of those grand pictures of Monte City in years gone by. I'm amazed at how many of them I actually recognize, so maybe I'm not as young as I think I am, but <laughs> the Goodman and the Chesco family go way back. I mean, way back, and I'm going to embarrass Susie and Roseanne to say that they were my first babysitters. And he can sing, so <laughs> I, I was an angel, wasn't I? I, mean, I was just... <laughs> No, but as, as they showed the store, it reminded me of how, like, my, we used to love to go down to Chesco's store. I don't know anything about fabrics, but I remember Mr. Chesco would always have a, one of those tubes that come from inside the fabric, and he would hand it to one of us, and we'd get to, whoever got the tube got to chase the other ones. And my mother would be, you know, everybody knows Shirley. But, I mean, I also remember how she used to have the fabric on the kitchen table and the pattern, because that's how they did it back in the old days. They, they cut it out of the... But the thing I remember most about Mr. Chesco, and I'm still reminded of it every day I, I meet him, is he's one of those guys that never seems to have a bad day. He is always smiling. He's always laughing. He's always kidding. I love to go across the street and talk with him and Pete, and I get a kick out of it how he calls Pete a kid. But when you're 92, 91, I guess everybody's kind of a kid. But now I know why, after looking at that, to be where he's been, to see what he has seen and to be able to come home and live a full life with a loving family in a town that loves him uh, is truly remarkable. And you must have had a guardian angel watching over you because I, I have a citation here that lists many accomplishments that list everywhere from the Good Conduct Medal, which we all know was baloney. That's the, <laughs> that's the, they never, that's the never, they never caught me medal, right? <laughs> to, to, uh, five bronze stars, and for those of you who are civilians, you get a bronze star for every theater of operation that you've been in. To be in five theaters of operation is, is absolutely amazing, and to be able to come home and tell that story, I mean, he, it's just it's beyond belief, and for those of us who follow World War II and, and truly are the greatest generation, uh, to be able to, that's such a sacrifice to his, his uh, country 
is something that our entire community can be proud of. So it gives me great pleasure on behalf of my colleagues in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives and my good friend and colleague, Senator David Argyle, to present you with both a House and Senate citation. Our next presenter is Bob Bankus from the Monai Township High School Alumni Association. Well, as you already learned, uh, Sergeant Chesco is a proud graduate of Monai Township High School, and he also is an active member of our Monday Township High School Alumni Association, where he has served for the last 12 years of our organization as the class rep for his class of 1942. And on behalf of the uh, Alumni Association, I would like to present to you, Sergeant Chesco, uh, this plaque in recognition of your service to our country and for your service to our association over the last 12 years. Congratulations. Betty Ann Chiscotti is going to present a, a plaque from the Monoy City Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the Monterey City Chamber of Commerce, we are proud to present and recognize Francis C. Chesco, Sergeant United States Army, 1943-1945, for his outstanding service and dedication to the Monterey City community and the United States of America. We honor you for your bravery and valor and are proud to call you our friend and our neighbor. Our president, Peg, Peg Rigolonis, will present a plaque from the Mahnoy Area Historical Society. Yes, Mr. Chesko, from the patch to Europe and back again, we've really grown to know you and love you at the Historical Society. Um, in 1942, I was born, so I didn't know much about the war, and I didn't hear too much about any war heroes. But I remember you from being in your store, always by Rosa's side, always cracking a joke. And I guess about three years ago, when we started working on our Monet Area Revisited book, and we started learning about all of the men from this town who gave their lives and their service, you would, you would come in on a Friday. That's the old timer's day, Friday. <laughs> okay. Dave Bat, Dave Bradbury won't, he's here somewhere, isn't he? Dave, yep, Dave's there. Of course, Tom and our buddy Francis. He always comes in with a joke, right? With a $2 bill, right? With his little lucky charm and a big smile and I must admit, he kind of flirts with the girls a lot, too. <laughs> What's that? And I can be, too. Oh, yes, you do. That's part of the flirting. That's part of the flirting. He always has, always has a little surprise for the girls. But um, through you and, and your, your group, um, I heard all the stories. Tom Ward kept me minute by minute apprised of what he was doing, and I got to read your, I think it's like an eight-page memoir that I believe, did you write or type up? Um, it, it's, it's heart rending. So it is my pleasure to award, presented to Francis C. Chesco in recognition of his extraordinary heroism, action and exceptional mechanical and building skills under duress during World War II, 1943 to 1945. We, I heard an awful lot about your building those bridges, and uh, the war wouldn't have 
gone anywhere, would it, without, without you building those bridges? And the way you trained in, in England for months, preparing, all that. So presented by the Monte Area Historical Society, December 13th, 2014. Our next presenter is Mary Edith Rhodes, who will present a plaque from the Mono City Borough. When I arrived here tonight, I didn't know that I would be the one honored to present this to my friend on the porch, on the front porch. You still think you're a teenager. Oh, I, oh, I am. <laughs> I'll say he is. He is. He is. <laughs> and he, he doesn't care how old any of us are. <laughs> That's right, we're all young men. <laughs> when, uh, when Peggy asked me, I was so thrilled because uh, he's a man that I, I have looked up to for many, many years and a friend. I miss him in the winter because he's not sitting on the front porch as much. But the other three seasons, my neighbors think I take awfully long walks every day. <laughs> but a good half hour or so of the walk is in front, is at his porch with Peter. Where's Peter? With Peter and him, and I, I could stand there for an hour or more. And oftentimes I do, and my neighbors think I'm wonderful for walking <laughs> every day. Um, I, I have this honor if I, I don't have my glasses because I didn't know I was going to do this, so we'll see. Are they reading glasses? Are they reading glasses? Are they? No, all of them. Oh, thank you. I'm going to try it. Your arm's not long enough. But my arm is Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> the Borough of Mahanai City honors and recognizes your service to your country during World War II. Sergeant Chesco, during his service with the United States Army, earned and was awarded the Bronze Star Medal with five bronze stars, the Purple Heart, Good Conduct Medal, World War II Victory Medal, European African Campaign Service Ribbon, American Campaign Commendation, and a Presidential Unit Citation. Sergeant Chesco's exemplary service to his country truly makes him a hometown Mahanoy City hero. I love you. Our next presenter is Mary Zalonis from the American Legion Post 74 in Mahanoy City. Monoy City Historical Society Vice President Mary Lou Henniger will make a presentation from Mahanoy Township. Mr. Chesco, Certificate of Honor. On behalf of the citizens of Mahanoy Township, we hereby express our grateful appreciation of the patriotic service rendered by Francis C. Chesco. We honor your service, your courage, and most of all, your sacrifices your dedication to the United States of America, its ideals, and its military is commendable and an honorable addition 
to the freedom you bravely fought for, not only for families in America, but throughout the world. God bless America. God bless you. With heartfelt gratitude, the Mahanoy Township Board of Supervisors. Marilyn Evans is here to present an award from the Monoy City Women's Club. Oops. Get it with me. On behalf of the Monoy City Women's Club, we would like to present this certificate of appreciation, which reads to Sergeant Francis Chesco. Uh, 148th Engineer Battalion of the United States Army during World War II from the Women's Club of Mahanoy City. Uh, I would like to add a little bit of uh, personal things to along with Neil. I too am a neighbor of Francis since 1961 across the street. Okay, let me tell you these things you see here you can see in Francis' front window a lot. You need a bigger one now from Robbie's other Right, <laughs> right. And, and it's true. If you need a story and he's on the porch, just stop. He just, he just loves it. He just, it's just great. It really, really is. And I remember uh, my mother taking me into their house, not, not, to the, not to the store. And I was with, selling their material okay in the house and then you went over into the store and uh, I remember it all and I watch Francis I, I, I keep track of him uh, I, I look out and I see that he puts the American flag out in front of his house and, I salute it too. and he salutes it on every occasion and I also check every Thursday night that he puts his garbage out <laughs> Dorothy Ward is Tom Ward's wife and uh, my mother-in-law, and she is here to present, make a presentation from the Ward family, actually two presentations, one to Francis and one to Roseanne, Susie, and Jimmy. So this is Dorothy Ward. You didn't know that Tom was going to roast you, did you, like the old Dean Martin show? Oh, yeah. You escaped. Uh, our family, Tom and me and Barb and Peg and Paul and Shirley Ryan donated a, a shadow box that was her late husband, Paul Ryan's, because he correct, collected all kinds of military things. And Tom made a point of gathering every medal and patch you're entitled to and put them in the shadow box. So we expect to see that in the window. <laughs> okay, Laura. on it, I can tell you. And the next gift is just from Tom, and he spent many hours working on it. What, one of the things he was impressed, you said that you build a bridge across the Thames in three and a half hours? At night. And he said they took three months to build one across the Mahanoy Creek. <laughs> But, but uh, even more so, every time we met 
we came up toward a bridge, and many of them are under construction. Francie and the guys would have had that up by now. <laughs> and then it got to the point where I'd say, uh-oh, another bridge. <laughs> Francie would have had that up in the day. So in these binders that Tom got put together, one for you and one for each of your children and somebody else, he still has some brothers, uh, are a lot of the bridges that you worked on, among other things. So we have uh, the white one for you and your, ch ch Ooh, your children. <laughs> your children will get the, the black ones. So My wife, Peg, typed up this agenda this afternoon to make sure we were on, on track. And uh, this is right after Dot's presentation in bold-faced print. Paul, ask if there are any other presenters. <laughs> so are there any other presenters? Is there anyone we missed? Okay. Susie said to make sure to tell you that there's food and beverages back at the table but especially to make sure to tell you that there's kielbasa there because of her dad. Her dad insisted that if there was going to be food, there had to be kielbasa. So at this time, I'd like to invite Francis to the microphone just to say a few words. If you have any questions for him, raise your hand and ask a question. everybody for coming. And what can I say after all of that? They cover just about everything. I have one question. Tom, uh, Dot said that Tom was going to roast you. And he told me a couple things that he was going to roast you about. So I think I'll ask a couple questions from him. What does the name Zoomer or Zoomer? Zana. Zana. What does that mean? Where'd you get that name? Somebody, one of my brothers couldn't pronounce my name, so he called me Zano. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, and then there's a picture of you, or a picture from France, where it was kind of like a girly show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember? Yeah. All right, well, we'll discuss that later. I don't know, it's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, boy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words, honest to God. I, am. I could tell you a lot of gruesome things went on with me, but I don't know whether I should or not. I, I left the gruesome things out of the, 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 the slideshow, and there are. I mean, there, oh, oh, you left them out. These guys went through hell. See, and uh, your buddies with half a face and well, intestines you know, laying around. Oh, terrible. Uncle Frank, how about the deer hunting over in Germany? About what? Tell about your deer hunting in Germany. Oh, the deer hunting? Tell about your deer hunting. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> the war was over, and uh, me and the fellow were out walking around on Herman Goering's estate. Wow. Uh, he was the Air Force, German Air Force, Luf, uh, the Luftwaffe. He was the general of it. So there was two big deer there, and I said to the one, to my buddy, I said, I'll take the one on the left, and you take the one on the right with our M1 rifles. <laughs> so we shot them. What are we going to do? So there was a little village about the size of Gilbert in there, and we uh, went in there, and this was only about a month after the war was over. And with our broken German and their broken English, they knew what we were talking about. So eight big Germans come out with their knives and they got up the deer and took it into the uh, little pub light. And guess what? We got invited for venison and potatoes. Oh. <laughs> and a few weeks before that, we were killing each other. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. About the time you were at the buffet in town and 
uh, the tank came down the street. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was up in Holland. Uh, there was a bridge up there across the canal, and we had it, uh, explosives on it, and we had three guys up there. They were going to set it off if the Germans were going to come across. So I was on guard duty about 5 o'clock in the morning. It was just getting daylight. <coughs> and I thought, boy, that looks like a, and it sounds like a German tank coming down. I go in, I get the lieutenant by the neck, with you was laying on the floor in a little cafe there, and I says, Lieutenant, the German tank coming down, he says, it can't be. I says, and just at that instant, an 88 shell came right through our truck. <laughs> get the bazooka, get the bazooka. Hmm. Got the bazooka, we're in a window, and aim it at the tank, and it wouldn't fire. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. So the turret on the tank starts coming our way. Out the back we went. <laughs> but the tanks followed us. Oh my God. So they started firing at us, and something hit me on the hip. Here, one of their bullets had knocked the top of a fence post off, and it hit my cartridge belt and knocked me over. <laughs> Thank God for that. I was lucky there. Oh man. He had a lot of a lot of stories you could tell, but like I said, Paul there he covered most of it. Yeah. Well, tell them about Shep. Oh, little old Shep. Yeah, my he had a dog named Shep. And I came home, and uh, he was in very bad shape, arthritis and whatnot. And my mother says take him up on the hill and shoot him. So with the pistol that I had brought home, I shot Shep. Uh, that was awful though. Yeah. Uh, I know. Oh, I did have some notes here. I don't know where they are. I think, Tom, I think Paul took them all. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No. Where, where are your notes? No, they're not mine. No, they're not okay. mine. Oh, you got them. Okay. Let's see, oh here we go. There was 49 guys from town and township in Barnesville in my outfit. Well he, he led them up on the slide and there, there they are all out there. Out of 49 there's four of us left. That's all. Yeah. I won't read the name, take too long. <laughs> Did you have this up on there or the battle? No. History of the Battle of the Bulge? Well, I might have taken pieces out of it, but I didn't have the whole oh, thing. Well. Would you like to tell them about the time that you were honored by the Belgium and different countries? The, the, the things that you go to? Oh, the, the reunions. Country. Well, and um, the place in Washington, D.C., you're invited. The oh, yeah, we have a reunion down there every, every uh, December the 16th in honor <coughs> of the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, yeah. Francis, they called and said the ambassador couldn't make it. We invited them, but they are working on something. So you may have to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. <laughs> think I'll make it. <laughs> Hold out. <laughs> That's the ambassador from the Belgian embassy. From the, yeah, from the Belgian yeah. embassy, right. Oh, yeah. Talk, talk to them several times. What are you going to do? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I won't read that. That's too much. But I, after I got wounded, I went to England for two and a half months. And uh, when I got better, I wanted to go back to the 148th Engineers, but they would, didn't need anybody. So I wound up with the 7th Armour Division. And that's it. Every, every story is in here. Quite a bit. Yeah. All, all, whatever we went through. From the beaches to the Baltic. Over 2,000 miles. 113,000 prisoners we took. Oh, yeah. oh, then that was your last job to take prisoners? Well, as we were in battles, well, sure, they'd come up with their hands up and sure, we take them. And a lot of ours, when the men that were taken prisoner, the Germans shot them. That, at Malmody, a hundred and some prisoners, they shot them. And we happened to go through there a couple of days later where they were shot. Arms up in the air and legs, oh God. 
terrible. Well, I think I said enough now, so I just want to thank, thank everybody that honoured me and everybody for coming. And have a good one. Thank you. Yesterday I was at, or two days ago, I was at Francis's house, uh, and I've been complaining to my wife a lot about you know walking the dog, sore knees, sore back. Not him, me. Uh, and uh, I was at Francis's house, and uh, he said, "Come on back, I have something to show you." He took me in the back of the house where he's building a room. So my knees suddenly felt better. He also even made the curtains. That's right, he made the curtains. I did ask him if he cooked, and he said, no, Susie does the cooking. <laughs> Kathy's going to sing God Bless America. Right. Hope you all join in, please. God Bless America. All of that is where you're tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Ye